Hi there everyone and in this video I would like to show you a suggested chess game to me, uh, one of the kindest and one of the best sub subscribers of my channel, Mr. Jeff, asked me to show this chess game. Uh, he is one of the uh, oldest subscribers of my channel as he was following my poor little chess channel for a long time. So I'm extremely grateful that you're following my channel for a very long time. So if you have any suggested chess games, you can ask me to show those chess games. And if I like the if I like those games, I might show those uh, show the games that you suggested to me in here because why not? So in this chess game, we have Emmanuel Lesker with the white pieces, and his opponent was Rudolf Lohmann, and this was from a chess simul. A 20 board chess simul from 1903 in London, in London Chess Club. So uh, Emmanuel Lesker's opponent was not an amateur chess player, despite the fact that this was actually from a chess simul. Mr. Rudolf Lohmann was a professional chess player and he played chess for the money. And uh, he was active, he was a very serious chess player. He was so serious that he became the second official chess champion of Netherlands. And he also won some unofficial chess championships of Netherlands. So interesting, isn't it? So let's see what happened in this chess game from 1903. And this was quite an immortal chess game. So this is the opening moves. And I would like to skip to the critical moment of this chess game. So uh, we see Spanish opening closed center attack. And this is the opening moves. There is nothing interesting so far. So let's skip and move forward to the key moment of this chess game. So I call this uh, as one of the key moments. So you can see that there is pressure uh, on C2. Lesker has some weaknesses and we have rook to G6. And this was a committal decision by Lumen. It looks risky, but at the same time, he's targeting on G2. Well, Lesker played F5. A very sharp move and allowing rook takes on g2. Can you see why he did allow that? Actually, it was a mistake. But we have knight takes on d4. Actually, rook takes on g2 is possible. But in this position, after queen takes on g2, bishop takes is not going to work because in between move, white has this move. And after queen to e7, only then rook takes on g2, bishop can jump, knight can jump after bishop moves, and this pass pawn is extremely dangerous. But in this position, uh, after bishop takes on g2, uh, sorry, uh, after queen takes on g2, I mean, knight takes on d4 uh, should, uh, should be the move, uh, not bishop takes queen, black doesn't have to capture the queen. And then after bishop takes on d4, now black can capture on g2. And there is no uh, there is no pawn i mean this pawn is not a monster pawn in this variation so rook takes on g2 rook to c4 and actually uh, this is winning for black because black has too many pawns so rook takes is possible queen takes bishop takes king takes and black is two pawns up and this should be winning for black okay but it is very complicated i admit so rook to g6 f5 by lesker but we have knight takes on d4 i mean he could have captured the pawn, but he didn't see knight takes on d4 in between move. So Lesker captured the rook and then knight takes on c2. Bishop to c5. Now Lesker wants to finish this as soon as possible. He wants to checkmate his opponent because Lumen is behaving very badly, baby. We have rook takes on c5, but Lesker captured the bishop. The pawn is pinned. So if capturing the pawn, rook takes queen. So we have rook back and then rook over and now attacking the knight uh, because in this position uh, if capturing the knight then rook takes queen takes and then pawn takes rook I believe. So rook to f4 by Emmanuel Lesker and now he is attacking the knight. So queen to c6 and Mr. Lumen is defending the knight and actually in this in this position, Lesker is winning the queen by force. Can you see how? Well, he captured the knight and what else? I mean, you have to capture back and it is white to move. Well, in my opinion, unnecessarily, Emmanuel Lesker made things a little bit too complicated. But 
in the potential endgame, it could be dangerous for white because black has three extra pawns in this endgame. Lesker played queen takes on c2, but rook to f8, I mean, if you see this move well done, which is very obvious, this is forced only move and then deflecting to rook and capturing the queen and white is a queen up. Why Lesker didn't want to play this? Well, it is perhaps because black has little bit too much pawns. Uh, black is three pawns up uh, in this possible continuation. But in the real chess game, uh, I mean, after queen takes on c2, Lesker didn't play rook to f8. He played queen takes on c2. Did you see the idea? After rook takes on c2, Lesker played. Very cool move, actually. It looks very cool. Ooh, rook to f8. And after this is the only move, Lesker created this extremely dangerous pass pawn and he is going to promote the pawn to a queen. So black tried rook to c1, black could even resign in this position, but he didn't resign and he was very glad that he didn't resign after the game. <laughs> I'm 100% sure. So king to f2, rook to c2 and Lesker played king to g3, which was unnecessary. Uh, after rook to c2, white should have considered king to e3, rook to c3, and after king to d2, attacking the rook, so after defending the rook, white can promote the queen. Okay, so after king to f2, rook to c2, and Lesker played king to g3, so king to e3 should have been considered. But then we have rook to c3 and it is white to move. Well, Lesker played, well, he made a blunder, an, an epic blunder. He played king to g4. Well, it is still not too late. He could have played king to f2 and if check, I mean, king to e3 and the king is getting closer to the rook with making zigzags. So if rook to c3, we still have a king to d2, both attacking the rook and threatening to promote the queen and actually uh, white is doing okay uh, but after rook to c3 king to g4 by emmanuel lesker and now after checking the king there is no getting closer to the rook with making zigzags because of rook to h4 and defending the pawn a disaster for white so lesker played king to g5 defending on h4 rook to h4 is most definitely not possible uh, but what would you do in this position if you had the black pieces? Lumen played the move and Lesker is in big trouble. Did you see the move? Actually, it is rook to h4. <laughs> it was a trick question. So this is a, an amazing move and this is an immortal move by Lumen. So what else? I mean, threatening to take the pawn. So Emmanuel Lesker captured the rook, but did you see the idea? Lumen played g5 and this came with a tempo. So after pushing the pawn, this is check and Lesker resigned, perhaps frustratingly. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, one of the greatest chess players of all times, Emmanuel Lesker, lost. And I think Lumen was the underdog in this chess game. The possible continuation and the end game is pretty, pretty simple, actually. So what else? King takes pawn and then king to g7 and defending. And king to f4, well, I, I think, I mean, it is impossible to defend because the king is going to be overloaded. So black has too much pawns in the queen side and the white king is helpless. White needs two kings. <laughs> in this case, as you can see, d3 and the king is overlo overloaded. So king takes on b4, but black is creating a pass pawn and this is check with promoting the queen. Unbelievable. So this is how Emmanuel Lesker, I mean, the, one of the greatest chess players of all times, and in my opinion, uh, probably the most underrated, greatest, one of the greatest of all times. When we see the greatest chess players of all times list, they usually don't talk about Lesker, isn't it? The guy was the world chess champion for 27 years. I mean, come on. Uh, they say Bobby Fischer, they say Kasparov, they say Magnus Carlsen, but not Lesker. I mean, seriously, you gotta be kidding me. Lesker should be in that list. I mean, they should talk about Lesker more. But in this game, I mean, maybe it was because of a simul. He played king to g3, which is still okay. But after rook to c3, king to g4 was 
a fatal mistake because of rook to c4, king to g5, what else? Uh, defending, but now rook to h4. Amazing, isn't it? What else? And then check. And this guy resigned after check, I believe. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. What an immortal, beautiful game. And thank you, Mr. Jeff, for suggesting this piece of art, amazing, interactive chess game. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye.